What is an angelic soul and how do you know if you are one? I'm Michelle, this is Angel Souls, and that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about. So first and foremost, a lot of people can have a lot of different definitions of what an angelic human is. I think a lot of times people confuse angelic souls or angelic humans with earth angels. Earth angels are help, they're sort of angel helpers usually, um, but they're very human. Maybe they're not on the same kind of trajectory as like an angelic soul would be. And that really is the key difference, uh, you know, between like what what you would see is like people who are some some spiritual people call them asleep. I don't know that they're asleep. They're just on a different path. Right. So it's about the soul's contract. If an earth angel has come in and said, you know what, I'm going to use my human experience to help others. Well, they're going to be not always, but sometimes you're humanitarians. People think of them as doctors, nurses. Just think of anybody who, when you needed help, they were there to help you, but they did it with the utmost kindness and love and support. That's an earth angel. Yes, very grounded, very solid in their third dimensional body. Okay, so an angelic soul or an angelic human some believe they have come from an angelic source. That gets into a complicated discussion, but this would be a soul that usually has gone through many lifetimes because you can't be new at this human. Well, I guess you could be an angelic soul and kind of be new, but they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Go look up date with an angel. That would be an example of like like a brand new angel soul coming to the earth. Okay. That's, it's kind of a funny example, but all, all the same. So an angelic soul for a lot of people who would be watching this, you have had many timelines. They are existing while you're existing here, but maybe not happening in the same time as this is happening here for you as this experience. And this soul has a heightened awareness uh, does not mean that they're all knowing. It does not mean that. As a matter of fact, we might be the most confused people on this planet. Okay, <laughs> like, why? Why are people weird? Why are people being mean to each other? Why? Why? You know, like, you know, we're the ones who are the most lost, and we can often be the ones who are the most stuck. And that is because we never fully acclimate the way other souls may acclimate, and that's okay. A lot of angelic souls are splintered. That doesn't mean that the soul is fragmented, but an angelic soul can take on so many different incarnations all at the same time. And so can other types of souls, I guess. Uh, but I don't know. Some people are just better built for an earth experience than an angelic soul. <laughs> right now, some people are going to disagree, but like angelic souls are super powerful. Stop it stop it's not about power that's an ego thing it's not about that at all and even saying that i mean a lot of angelic souls come in and have the roughest lives but we'll get into that here in a moment so your soul's contract is just different your unity soul your higher self whatever you want to call that your your personal oneness that then would become the oneness of a collective or of the universe uh it's having, it's got different goals. It's got different goals. An angelic human is often here to help, which is, I know that can get confusing with the earth angel type of definition, but the angelic soul may not be in a profession, for example, that is an obvious helping profession. That might be the person who, and I got to say this, and I feel like it's okay to say this. You could be the one that ends up with many different types, or it feels like many different types of lives within one. Uh, this is often to get you towards or amongst people because you have a deep soul lesson with them. Please see Highway to Heaven. This is kind of what we're talking about here. You get dropped into situations. It's more about the people that you're around than the actual job or the actual neighborhood, so on and so forth. 
Angelic souls often find themselves in close call situations. Yes, you could have near-death experiences, but this is more, you kind of end up getting called to where something has something big has just occurred or is about to occur. We are the practitioners of holding space. We are the practitioners of being witness. We are the ones that are supposed to help everybody be more empathetic. Now, in order to be more empathetic, you have to have some deep, deep practice on how bad it can get. But again, let's save that for a, in a moment. But I want to use an example just about everywhere I've ever lived. Uh, I didn't know why I was being called to a certain place. I just felt the pull to go there. And I would get there and suddenly I realized, oh my gosh, like people are still suffering from this trauma. I moved to New York City two years after 9-11. And when I moved there, uh, the World Trade Center was still a giant pit. Uh, people actually refer to it as the pit. And there was a chain link fence with like flowers. Some of them were fresh. Some of them had been there a while. Uh, flyers, some of them again were faded. Others were fresh. And there were still people walking around handing out flyers asking, have you seen my mom? Have you seen my sister, my father, my brother? The trauma was still fresh. Now I thought I was just going there for grad school. And when I went, one of the first things I did when I went to New York was to go pay my respects. Uh, and I saw this. And you know you're an angelic human when you get these deep, let's call them hits. Uh, there's not really a language to describe this, but sort of a deep hit that is not intellectual. So when I say I was standing there and I knew why I was supposed to be there, I'm supposed to hold space, I'm supposed to make eye contact with the person who's handing me a flyer and just hold them there for a minute. That is not something that was an ego thing. It is a whole body experience. And it, it never really kind of hits the ego. I mean, it took years and years, even after I've moved away from New York City. It was only in hindsight that I really understood. At the time, I just identified it as a feeling, right? And that knowingness is not intellectual. When you just know something, most of the times you cannot articulate it because there, like I said, there's no language for it. There's no good way to explain it. So that's another sign that you are an angelic human. Now let's talk about all those crazy experiences. You've had so many unbelievable things happen to you, some of which might have been close calls, near-death experiences. Um, so much so that if you were to hire, this actually happened to me. If you were to, I guess, hire, hiring a therapist, that's not what we do. Do we hire you? Is that weird? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That just felt weird to say that. Um, but let's say you go to somebody who's supposed to have studied, you know, they're a professional and they're supposed to be able to hear your story. And, and if you were to go in and start telling them everything, it would take months and months to get everything out and they don't believe you because they don't think any human would go through all of that. Or in my case, I had a therapist, my most recent one uh, from like now a couple of years ago, did not believe me. I had to bring in photos. She asked for newspaper clippings of an event that I was at um, that I experienced. Um, and there were times in therapy sessions where I would stop and I would look at her and I would say, are you okay? Do you need a break? I was saying that to the therapist. Now they're still human, okay? And yeah, a lot of therapists find their way to being a therapist because they have their own experiences. And so, yes, I wanted to be very sensitive to that. Um, I was talking about something really awful, um, gut-wrenching. And um, I asked her if she needed a break. And we actually, she said no, but we ended up switching topics. And then I... I don't think I ever really got back to it because people can't handle hearing what you've experienced. And that can lead us to feeling misunderstood, 
sometimes unloved, like we're absolutely lost in this world. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because what's the egotistical viewpoint of angels or angelic humans? When I say egotistical, I do mean that in sort of the shadow aspect. If you're a real, I used to get this all the time when I started Angel Souls. If you were a real angelic soul, you would have no anger. We're the most hurt people. A lot of us. We have a lot of anger. We're trapped in these bodies and we're screaming to get out a lot of times. And it just feels so unnatural to us. So yes, we carry anger and anyone who says that they don't, maybe they've evolved, maybe they've overcome, but more often than not, they're selling something. We're expected to not ever have a bad day. Often when you are the angelic soul around other types of souls, you would be the one that everyone comes to with their sad story. You're the one people complain to. If you try to say anything or contribute to a conversation, we often get silenced. We often have people talking over us. Now, a lot of people watch this going, that could be a lot of people. It's in combination with all the other things that I'm describing. And we could go deeper into this. This is just a light treatment for this video. But my point is, is that we don't usually get to have a voice. That's why I love having this channel. I can sit in front of a camera. I didn't think that I would like it, but I'm like, wow, I, I do get to have <laughs> my say. Now, what's interesting, if you guys know the history of this channel, uh, when I came on in 2013, it started to take off pretty quickly. That bothered a lot of people. Some of you know some of the drama that went down. There was literally another YouTuber who went on a full campaign to take me down. Now it's funny, but they're still out there. Last I heard. Um, and you probably know them. Maybe. But then uh, it just kind of like stayed and the message was just kind of there. And then there was this huge spike. And I don't know where it came from. I was just doing my thing with my head down. Like, you know, okay, let's just work and do, do the angelic thing that we're supposed to be doing. And uh, then it just plateaued and started dipping down a little bit. And now, the more and more I started getting some of this messaging out, uh, the, the less and less people were seeing it. So if you are seeing this, boy, if that doesn't tell you that you need to hear some bit of this, because I, I, my channel is buried, honey. It's buried. <laughs> right? So, you know, I'm aware of it. I'm very aware of it. So, you know, that's another thing that angelic humans often, you know, we have a hard time sometimes being successful because success is not, it's not on our radar usually. Now that doesn't mean when you come in and you really start to embody this 3D reality that you don't start um, trying to play along and go, well, let's see what I can do in here in this life experience. Like, make the most of it because I, I ain't coming back. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> One and done. I, I've had it. Like, I'm going to gather up all the other incarnations that we got going on. We're going to come back together and get on with it, you know. Uh, so you might have a little problem with things, problems, I should say, with trying to figure out how to keep yourself healthy because it's not innate for you. Usually you don't have to work at that. Usually you just are, right? A sense of beauty. This one's nice, isn't it? Um, you're beautiful in inexplicable ways. Like people could say, I mean, you know, yeah, maybe you're physically attractive, but there's just another type of attractiveness about you. And it's not charisma. It's not just warmth. It's, it's not just being pleasant because sometimes you're not pleasant. Sometimes now somebody who's out trying to war, be at war with everybody, that's something else. I don't know. Or maybe that's an angelic human with clipped wings, so to speak. I don't know. I don't know. We'd have to examine that, I suppose. It's this whole inexplicable beauty. And you might have even heard within your life, if someone fell in love with you or if you were popular 
or if, well, a lot of angelic humans usually are not popular because not everybody's a fan of this energy. There's a lot of darkness working through others. And so they don't like the contrast. It's too much. It's too much distortion for them. So they'll attack instead, which is another sign. Like if you've just gotten bullied for no reason, that could be a part of it. Or if you are someone who attracts a lot of people in, because that could be the other manifestation of this, others may stand there and go, why you? Why would anybody love you? Like, you're not hot <laughs> or whatever. And they just can't put their finger on it. And you've probably seen these people out there. You know, they might be the one that attracts a lot of love partners or, you know, a lot of people want to be around them. And you know that they have a great energy, but in the physical realm, maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So inexplicably beautiful. Angelic souls tend to have a very beautiful voice. Now that does not mean that every single angelic soul can sing because we are in these density bodies. Um, and as I say this, I'm not trying to sound like crazy um, <laughs> or make it <laughs> Make it sound like we're these like otherworldly beings that, you know, it somehow makes us special that we came here on a mission or whatever. It's not that. Okay. Listen, hey, yo, we all, we all got, every soul has an origin. Every soul has an origin and ultimately we are all one. Yes. If we go back far enough, we are all one. But this is just kind of how the breakdown has gone. This is what the soul contract is calling for. So let's get back to the voice. Uh, they tend to have very soothing voices. Yes, maybe you can sing. But a lot of times, angelic souls, when they sing, it's, eh, I don't know. There, there, there could be light language singing. You know, it, it's pure. It's crisp. It doesn't have words. Like, I mean, there are no words to describe the sound because it's it's not innate <laughs> to the human voice if that makes any sense and some have been able to hone that pretty well but uh speaking voices if you've heard people say i just love the sound of your voice and it doesn't even have to be a typical what, what would be like mainstream typical beautiful voice there's just something about it and it's more the energy that is being expressed through your voice that people get drawn in by. Okay. This might be a little controversial, but a lot of times angelic souls will not have kids. They will not have kids. It doesn't mean you can have kids. It doesn't mean that if you do have kids that you're not an angelic soul. It's just we're we're coming in to get back out <laughs> we're coming in we got stuff to do and then we're getting back out uh your child could be an angelic soul you know there could be an agreement there that um you know another part of that energy is going to be working with you so all those are possibilities but if you were somebody who's like i just i don't know it never felt right to have kids because i need to be freed up to be everyone's mother or everyone's father like I, I have this love that expands beyond and I want to be available as a parent, perhaps, again, so to speak, for everyone who never had one. That's kind of a very angelic soul kind of thing. Um, but again, if you have kids, that's also a super blessed thing and say, hi, your kids for me. I love you guys. I love all of you. Oh, I said guys, sorry. I love all of you. That's a bad habit. Calling everyone guys. It's a hard habit to break. <laughs> Having a weird sense of humor, finding a lot of just, how do I want to put this? Um, a lot of human behavior just really funny sometimes and other people being like, what are you laughing at? Now, I'm not talking about somebody who's like a freaking sociopath who laughs at human pain. It's not that, but like, I know I, things that make me laugh are just like facial expressions. I don't know why it's not even that funny, but I find myself laughing hysterically or like just how the body moves or if I if I trip across the floor I will be the first one to laugh at myself because how clunky are these bodies right you know it's just stuff like that now you will often hear angelic souls tend to get attracted towards I don't even know some certain career or whatever 
that's not how I'm taking that in and passing it through. It doesn't negate what other people have to say about it, but I just want to be honest and say, I don't, I don't get that. Um, we are in every kind of profession because we need to be around every kind of person. Uh, in the example of, we're talking about being incarnated and being around certain people, another sign of an angelic human, unfortunately, is that you maybe don't get along with your family. Now that could be a lot of other types of souls, but an angelic light soul will often choose to come into a family that is very complicated. And that becomes its own discussion, I suppose, because I don't want to sit here and say, oh, you're here to save your family. No, no. As a matter of fact, um, you're in there to show what could be. And unfortunately, as I was mentioning before, a lot of darkness is working through people and that darkness wants to fight the light. So if you are the one that came into your family and you loved them unconditionally and they just would not love you back, no matter what you did, you know, no, no matter how loving you are, how much you tried to please everybody, it just wasn't good enough. It's because they could not perceive you, but by having you there, even though you may not readily recognize it, they may not readily recognize it, they have changed. They have changed and it could take years. You know, one of the examples would be, and some of you out there might be able to relate to this, but someone, you, you could just feel that they loved you. Let's say in a romantic way. You could feel that they loved you and yet, I like I would hear this all the time. I just, I, I'm so drawn in, but I, I don't know how we make sense together. And they're confused by their feelings. That is not you scrambling or manipulating them. You don't have the same kind of energy like other people. You do not have a typical energy. Again, that's not to put you on a pedestal. It's not to say you know, you're grandiose and you're better than everybody. You're just different. Okay. You're just different. And you do need a different level of care, which we can talk about here in just a little bit. But this would be the kind of thing where someone, you're always the one that got away. Let's put it that way. You're always the one that got away because people realize too late what they had in you because they went towards something that was more familiar, something that felt closer to their own nature, which is not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that the next person who came in couldn't love them or be a beautiful person. It's just, it's different. And then they, you might, oh God, should I say this? You might've had stalkers in your life, maybe because of this certain type of situation that I'm explaining, or because someone's just trying to figure you out. And, and it's like, they're almost entitled to figure you out. And so they get in there and they're, your energy does have this accepting quality to it. And we do go by a different set of rules. We're here to love and be loving. We do not interfere with each other's free will. So I think people who are kind of in the stalker category, um, <laughs> they pick up on that. Like, hey, your whole job is to love me. And, and they're not understanding that you can't chip away at an angelic soul. There will be great punishment for that. So anybody who does mess with an angelic soul, trust and believe, there has been repercussions for that. Now, I said punishment, but it's not like the universe is out there trying to, like, go after, smite your enemies or whatever. It's not, it's not quite that. Um, more it's, they've shown by, by not showing you love, they have thrown a thorn into their own side. They did it to themselves. The universe doesn't have to do anything. They suffer by not accepting your goodness or uh, that sounds really crazy, I guess, because you have badness in you too. Again, you're still human, but by not, you know, honoring the love that you have to give. That doesn't mean somebody, that does not mean that you're like, I'm an angelic soul and I choose you and you have to date me. No, we don't interfere with people's human free will. We don't do that. 
you can also experience bad karma too. So be careful with that. But I'm saying more like somebody who didn't didn't know what they had until it was gone, as I've said, um, or was you, the absence of you. Now, this is why angelic souls have to be extra careful with allowing relationships back into your life. Maybe it's appropriate, but usually it's not. Usually it's not. You did your duty. You showed up. You held presence. You played witness to a lesson, an experience, whatever the case may be, and it's time for you to go. It's time for you to move on. This also goes for anybody who tries to, um, if they're into dark energy manipulation and they try to throw something on you, you will feel the effects of it. You'll definitely experience that. But the karma they get for doing that is immense, is immense. Let's talk about self-care for an angelic soul. I could go on and on and on about this. So if you have questions, I can make another video. Leave your comments down below. The self-care. You may be someone who needs to be alone sometimes to regenerate. You are definitely someone who needs to meditate. You are definitely someone who needs to kind of like touch base with home for a little bit, like the angelic realm. Again, not that you were born of the angelic realm necessarily. I don't want us to get confused with this idea of incarnated angel. That was sort of a contrived thing, I think, to sell books uh, or decks or whatever I said what I said. All right. It's not authentic. Um, and that person isn't even an angelic soul. They were just a very good convincer. <laughs> okay I said what I said all love and respect but when we meditate it has to be connecting with angelic frequency because that's what we've agreed to embody that's what we've agreed to let move through us to be a conduit for that type of messenger healing energy and yes a lot of times we are messengers and healers uh so you need your downtime, you need your alone time. It is especially important for you to be engaging in self-care. Because it's like you've got these achy old bodies. <laughs> even if it's not, even if you're not old, I mean, you could be like 18 years old and feeling like you're 100, right? Because it's just like, oh, I just don't fit in here very well. Or a lot of times, uh, angelic souls will have a hard time regulating their body. So you're too hot, you're too cold, you're too thin, you're too fat. Uh, <laughs> like, there's just always something that's a little amiss <laughs> within your body. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. But again, it's just the clunky experience of being human. So as far as life force foods, you need to have them or you're going to get sick. I can speak from experience. This whole, oh gosh, I got to admit, probably two weeks, been very busy. I have not been eating a whole lot of fruits and vegetables and I'm starting to not feel well. <laughs> okay. Um, so you want to like really hmm, be careful with people who are like, oh my gosh, I'm so spiritual. I'm so special. I'm so high frequency. I never get sick. Well, tell me you're not doing your assignment without telling me you're not doing your assignment. The whole freaking thing is to come here and be like, what's it like to be human? What's it like to be, <laughs> like, what are we going through? So life force foods, the types of exercise that would be right for you, it's going to change, but anything that involves a lot of like, almost like dance, anything that's joyful. A lot of people will say, no, yoga. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not for angelic souls. Now, you can choose to do yoga. You can totally get into it if you want. I don't care what you do. Okay? I mean, as long as you're happy, baby, I'm happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. That's it. Go ahead and do it. But is that like the type of thing that... <laughs> I think angelic humans often have a hard time with, with yoga because, again, we have a little hard time understanding how these bodies move. Um, we're not used to the constraints. I sound crazy. I know I do. I'm not trying to sound crazy here, but I'm just you know, also just trying to like lay down here for you. Angelic souls, and I'm probably going to wrap this up because again, I can go on and on and on about all this stuff. Angelic souls never really find a place to be. Uh, so you might be someone who hops around in, a lot, 
It doesn't have to be that, okay? Not everybody chooses that. But you just never feel like you belong anywhere. You might hop from place to place to live. Um, you might find that you get attracted to groups of people and then those relationships just sort of fade away. Then you gravitate towards another group of people. Again, part of that could be, you know, the holding space, the plain witness to things, uh, being a support, but it could also be you, just like I was giving an example of being dropped into a family unit that's very toxic. Um, you might be dropped into a unit of people where they are also toxic and you're just there for the contrast. You're just there to kind of wake everybody up. You can walk into a group of friends and there's a queen bee who acts ridiculous and everyone's just so used to her or him uh, that or scared of them or just usually just brainwashed. Those people, those like queen bee types, they cast a spell. When you've got someone that's hopping to for somebody who is just a jerk, how else is that happening? You know, there has to be some convincing of her minions that she or he is a god, right? But when an angelic soul comes in, you're not going to fit in. You're going to feel awkward. They're going to treat you poorly. It's going to be all the things, right? But when you leave, those people who were just giving in to this person or who are under that person's spell, they start to wake up a little bit. Now, they might choose to go back to sleep. They might choose to go back under that spell, but more often than not, at least there's a little crack in the surface. There's a little bit of a, okay, something's not right here. There's so many other things. Leave your questions down below. I'm going to leave this one here for now. Share it out to people who you think need to hear this. And I love you. You do have family here. I am your family. And again, spread that love all over the place. Let us all know that you're here. Take care.